Today we're counting down the top 10 inexpensive tarantulas in the hobby. Let's get started. Now initially I was going to say cheap, but that just kind of sounds tawdry and that's not what I'm going for at all. So these are the cheapest tarantulas in the hobby, or maybe we should call them budget species. They're not very expensive, they're widely available, and a lot of them are even included with your order as freebies. But if you're looking to pick up an inexpensive tarantula, this is a list for you. Now, my name's Richard, this is the Tarantula Collective, and if you enjoy videos about tarantulas, scorpions, and other inverts, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Love to have you. Now, just so we're all on the same page, this isn't like a scientific study or anything like that. I'm not a statistician, there's no analytics that went into this. Essentially, what I did is I went to like the top five or 10 online dealers and searched their available inventory sorted by price from lowest to highest. And these are the species that kept coming up over and over again, and I just kind of made an average price based on what everyone else was charging because essentially they're they're pretty much the same. Now, of course, this is just US dealers. If you live in a different country, the prices and the availability and whether they're rare or very common, is it may be a little bit different. But I think most of these species are, are pretty common and readily available. And of course, I should mention that these are for spiderlings, usually the smallest slings available. The larger the tarantula or the older the tarantula is, the more expensive it's gonna be. But if you're looking to pick up a tarantula on the cheap, you're gonna have to get it very small. So the first tarantula comes in around $30 for a sling. It's a very common species, makes a great beginner tarantula. And that is the Chilicotl albipelosis. That species formerly was known as the Brachypelma albipelosum and commonly known as the curly hair tarantula, has recently been split up in the hobby between the Nicaraguan curly hair and the Honduran curly hair, with the Nicaraguan being the true form and the Honduran being uh, kind of like a hobby form. So the hobby form is most likely gonna be cheaper. Now this is a staple species in the hobby. It's been around for a long time. It's a great beginner tarantula because it's very hardy and easy to take care of and it's fairly docile, especially as adults. For a long time, this was one of the main tarantulas you saw in the hobby, but they are very unique looking, a very cool species to add to your collection and not expensive at all. Now number nine is a great display species of tarantula and they grow pretty large. Also coming in around $30 is the Acanthoscuria geniculata. You'll see this tarantula referred to commonly as the Brazilian white knee, the giant white knee, or the white banded tarantula. It's a very fast growing new world tarantula that comes from the northern forests of Brazil. Now this species can grow up to about an eight inch leg span, and it's been known to reach nearly four inches in leg span within a year. Females of the species can live up to 20 years, males tending to live only about four or five on average. This tarantula does have urticating hairs that can be very irritating, and being a nervous and defensive tea, they do not hesitate to kick them. Though this tarantula would normally retreat to its hide when it feels threatened, this tarantula can be very quick, grow very large, has an amazing feeding response, but you gotta be on the lookout and be careful with those hairs. Now the number eight tarantula is gonna run you probably around 25 to 30 bucks, and that is a Chilicotl vogans. This species is famously known throughout the hobby as the Mexican red rum tarantula, but it has also been imported and sold under the common name Central America, Guatemalan, Honduran, or Mexican black velvet tarantula. This species is a new world terrestrial opportunistic burrower that comes from the Yucatan Peninsula, but it has also been observed in Belize, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Northeastern Costa Rica. There's even been some discovered in Central Florida, though they're not native. That's definitely an invasive species. Now, this is an awesome dwarf species that's gonna cost you about 25 bucks. And because it's dwarf, the spiderlings are gonna be exceptionally small. And that is the Syracosmus. Now, this dwarf species is very colorful with an amazing pattern and because it's so small, requires a very small enclosure. Adults do stay out in the open quite a bit, which makes them an ideal display tarantula. They are fairly docile and would much rather hide in their burrow or up in their webbing than to ever try to bite you or kick any hairs. They're a very cute species and they do some amazing webbing in their enclosure. So if you're looking for an easy to care for, inexpensive tarantula that is gonna put some awesome webs up, this is definitely a good species for you. Now this next species is a classic and it's gonna cost you probably about 25 bucks to pick one up, but it's got a cool pattern, amazing feeding response, and is essentially a staple in this hobby. And that is the Nando Chromatis. 
The Brazilian red and white tarantula is a terrestrial New World species that comes from the subtropical forests and grasslands of Brazil and Paraguay. It's a very popular species in the hobby because they do very well being kept in captivity, and they produce egg sacs with hundreds or even thousands of spiderlings. They're similar in appearance to the Acanthoscuria geniculata, but you will see a definite difference by looking at the color of the carapace, as the Incrematus has a paler bone color appearance, and the geniculata is a definitely darker black. This species is an opportunistic burrow, but it spends a lot of time out in the open especially when they get larger and approach their adult size. This is another species with some very effective urticating hairs that can be extremely irritating if you get them in your skin. They are a little bit skittish and they're quick to flee and hide and are prone to kick those hairs up when they're disturbed. So definitely be mindful of that, but this is a very cool species to add to your collection. Now number five is an arboreal New World Tarantula. It's gonna cost you around 20, 25 bucks on a good day. And that is a Somopius Cambridge. Now, although the Trinidad Chevron is a New World Tarantula, it has no urticating hairs, and it uses intimidation as its defensive behavior, whether that's a threat pose or just its unadulterated speed. This tarantula can be unpredictable, as it will sometimes freeze and other times bolt, and it's also been known to jump if it can't find a quick way out of a situation. Now, the P. Cambrigi's venom is considered medically significant, and it is actually the source of somatoxin, which is used in the treatment of strokes. It's a beautiful tarantula, but very very fast, probably not the best pick for a beginner, but if you already have some experience with tarantulas, this is a very beautiful and inexpensive species to add to your collection. Now this next species is infamous in the hobby. In fact, I don't think I've ever actually bought one. Even though I have three or four of them in my collection, I think they were all just given to me as freebies when I placed orders for other species. This old world arboreal tarantula is gonna cost you around $20, and that is the Heteroscota maculata. Known as the Toga Starburst Baboon or the Ornamental Baboon, this tarantula is a beautiful spider with a very cool black and white coloration and pattern that comes from West Africa. Found in Toga and Ghana, care should be taken with this species as it is very fast and very defensive and has medically significant venom. But they are extremely easy to take care of and widely available in the hobby. So you're not gonna have a hard time finding one and they're not gonna be very expensive. And for costing so little, they're an extremely beautiful tarantula. Now, number three is another old world species that is as colorful as it is popular. Coming in around $20 a piece is the Pteranoculus muranus. More commonly known as the OBT orange baboon tarantula, Mombasa golden starburst, or the orange bitey thing, this is an old world terrestrial tea that has been known to show semi-arboreal tendencies. With its famous bright orange color and notoriously grumpy attitude, the OBT comes from the central and southern areas of Africa and is known to be found in Angola, Burundi, Congo, Kenya, and more. Females can live up to 15 years and grow to almost six inches in size. This tea is well known for being very defensive and quick to throw a threat posture or even slap the ground when you disturb it. Though they will almost always prefer to flee and hide in their burrow than ever try to bite you or escape. But you still need to be very careful and mindful around them. Now number two is a personal favorite of mine and is a pretty common species here in the US. Though if you live in other countries, sometimes they're a lot more expensive and a lot more difficult to come across. Again, costing you around $20 is the Afonapelma calcodes. Known as both the Desert Blonde Tarantula and the Arizona Blonde Tarantula, this New World Terrestrial Tea can be found in Southern Arizona and Northern Mexico. They're famous for their blonde hairs and chill demeanor. Females are usually a solid tan color, while males normally have black legs and a copper-colored carapace with a reddish-brown abdomen. This is a very slow-growing species and takes years to reach maturity. These tarantulas can grow up to about six inches in size, with males living about six to eight years and females living over 25 years. I think part of the reason they're so inexpensive is because they grow so slowly. So even after a few years, they're still just a little tiny sling. But even though they're slow growing, they're still a very cool species and I highly suggest you get one if you haven't got one already. Now, before we do the number one species, I've got a quick honorable mention. But first, if you're enjoying this content, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any new content in the future. Now, this honorable mention is very similar to the previous tarantula, which is why it didn't technically make the list, but it's only gonna cost you about $20 and is a very cool species. That's the Afonapelma hensi.
You can find this tarantula referred to as the Texas brown, the Oklahoma brown, the Missouri brown, and many other names. This tarantula is native to the southern United States. This specimen has a bronze or brass-colored carapace, burgundy or brown abdomen and legs, making it very distinguishable from the Arizona blonde tarantula. They're known to be very docile and very long-lived. A very cool species, extremely easy to take care of, and picking up a sling for $20 or less is not a bad deal. Just be careful you're not buying wild-caught adult specimens, because that's not good for the hobby at all. Now the number one budget tarantula, the cheapest species, the most inexpensive spider, coming in between $10 to $15 a piece, and most likely free if you order any other tarantula, is the Lossiodora periabana. The Salmon Pink Bird Eater is a New World terrestrial tarantula endemic to northeastern Brazil. Argued to be the third or fourth largest tarantula in the world, it can grow anywhere between 9 to 11 inches, with most species only really having about an 8 or 9 inch leg span. The Salmon Pink Bird Eater, also known as the LP, is a very fast growing tarantula and can reach its adult size in as little as two years. And they have a lifespan of up to about 15 years. Part of the reason they're so readily available all around the world, which in turn makes them very inexpensive, is the fact that they lay anywhere between one to 3,000 eggs per clutch. So one pairing really just floods the market with this species. But they are definitely a gorgeous tarantula and for 10 bucks, you can never go wrong. If there's an inexpensive species of tarantula that didn't make my list, make sure to tell me about it down below in the comments. I'm sure we would all appreciate your tip. Now, if you enjoy these top 10 videos, I've got a whole playlist of them right here you can watch. And if you wanna see some of my Karen husbandry videos on the species in this list, just check out this playlist right here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>